Good morning, Journey family and friends. It's great to see you all. Uh, glad you've joined us for worship this morning. This is a big day for us here at The Journey. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up our series on God's thoughts on the globe's biggest problems and um, answering the question, God, does God still have the whole world in his hands? Uh, right now, even as we speak, uh, Team Journey is out on the streets of Long Beach running 13.1 uh, miles, 26.2 miles, a half marathon, a marathon uh, to... Um, participate in addressing uh, God's answers to one of the globe's biggest problems in, in helping the poor and oppressed and those who lack access to clean water and then all that uh, comes out of that. Uh, so you're going to get a chance to hear from some of our runners today, uh, a chance to hear from Don Lee, who is uh, the guy that got us all caught up in this uh, Team World Vision thing in the first place, and uh, be reminded again of what uh, the whole water thing is all about. Uh, so whether you're watching at home on your couch this morning or you are in downtown Long Beach at the start finish line or maybe uh, in Belmont Shore or uh, in Whaley Park over by Long Beach State, uh, we're glad that you're with us and uh, let's uh, pray as we enter into worship this morning. God, thank you that, uh, that we're here and, and that you're with us uh, wherever we're watching from and that uh, we're united together by your spirit. And I pray your blessing on this day. I pray that uh, for those who are out walking, running, Lord, keep them safe, bless them um, uh, on, their, on their trek and bring them to the finish lines. For those who are um, uh, watching and cheering, uh, God, give them uh, uh, full, full of spirit and enthusiasm to, to cheer our runners on. For those who are watching from home, Lord, I uh, pray for your presence uh, uh, and your spirit with them to fill them with, uh, with peace and joy and um, and uh, direction and grace in their own lives. Um, I pray that uh, you would uh, encourage our hearts and strengthen our faith uh, through our worship this morning and meet us here, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, uh, we're wrapping up our series on God's thoughts on the globe's biggest problems. Does the God still have the whole world in his hands? And, and you might be thinking, hey, that seems a little bit pre premature, really. Four weeks and we've uh, addressed all the world's biggest problems. Um, aren't there a few more than that? And uh, um, yeah, probably there are. And uh, have we really solved any of those problems? And there's probably still a lot of work to be done in, in that regard, too. But I, what I hope I, you do see by this point is that there have been some recurring themes, um, regardless of what the problems are uh, that we address. We see that, um, that God um, asserts himself as the creator of, of all things, and as the creator that the earth is his and the fullness thereof, all the stuff in it, all the people who live in it belong to God, that he claims it as his own. And that a lot of the problems that we um, endure and we encounter in the world are problems that are uh, human contrived. It, it, there, there are problems. It's, um, it's greed. It's the pursuit of power. It's the pursuit of comfort and security at the, ex at the expense of others uh, that brings nations into collisions and brings division into families and, and that uh, destroys the, the planet that God created for us. It's, it's the things that we've done with the gifts that God has given us that have created uh, our problems. And, and despite that, that God still um, loves his creation, that he loves the world that he made and he, he loves the people that, that dwell in it, that uh, God still um, pursues us, God still desires a relationship with us. And, and we've seen uh, each week that God calls us to participate um, in the work that he's doing, to, to be the caretakers of his creation, to be good stewards of the planet. Um, to be agents of peace and reconciliation um, and, and bridging the gap and, and bridging the, the divisions, um, to care uh, for the people that uh, um, have suffered most, to care for the poor and the oppressed, for the widow and the orphan. Uh, we've seen each week that God has made promises, that he has promised that he is going to renew all things, restore the creation that he's promised. That, uh, that one day that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and, and all the divisions among the nations will be brought together. Um, that he's promised that, uh, that we have a, a, a hope and a future, a, a glory uh, that isn't worth comparing to our present sufferings. And so all of that's true, but, but it's still a battle, isn't it? 
for us to not get swallowed up, even though we have this uh, assurance from God and these promises from God and, and this hope that he's given us, that it's, it's still hard for us to not get sucked up into the trauma and the drama of the saber rattling of the nations and the pontificating of the politicians and, and the Facebook rants of, of our friends and, and, and frenemies. Um, to, be, to not be taken out by stress and anxiety and fear as we encounter uh, the problems that we see in the world, uh, to not give in to hopelessness and despair, uh, to, to not react in, in anger and defensiveness uh, when we encounter these things on, on a personal level. Um, it, takes, it takes intentionality. It takes discipline, it, it takes practice to live as people of hope, to, to live as people of faith in the midst of this world um, with a God who has um, made these promises to us and has promised to be with us in the midst of all of them. Um, some of our community right now, some of our Journey family are, are out running the streets again um, right now. and. Um, Many of you have already partnered with them in, in, the, in the work that they're doing this morning. Uh, I hope that uh, those of you haven't, maybe you, maybe you will this morning. But uh, those of us who are part of Team World Vision, we're always being reminded of our, our why and being, being reminded to think about our why. Why is it that we're doing what we're doing? Um, Proverbs says, Solomon says in the Proverbs that, that where there is no vision that people cast off restraint, that, that it's vision of a preferable future, it's seeing something out there and pursuing that that gives us the, the, um, the resolve and the, the intentionality and the purpose that derives the decisions that we make. It's vision of a child receiving clean water that, that gets our runners out, up out of bed uh, early on a, on a Saturday morning to, to beat the heat. It, it's a vision of um, communities being um, rescued from generations of poverty that um, that gets our, our runners to, to make those hard asks to their friends and family members, not because they love fundraising, but because they have this vision of a different world and, and they do hard things, they discipline themselves, they practice these things um, so that they can um, bring this reality, these potentials, these opportunities into reality. Where there is no vision, people crap, um, cast off restraint. It, it's vision that drives discipline and vision that drives our practicing and, and our preparations and, and the hard things that are involved in, in living differently in the world. So as, as we wrap up this series, I, I want to take that same idea, that same principle that's, uh, that's uh, helping our runners to move their feet and has taken them through a 12 to 16 week training program uh, of discipline and practice. I want to take that principle and uh, challenge you with it today. Challenge us with, us to, with it today as, um, as we uh, confront the globe's biggest problems and seek to be God's people and God's answer to those problems. And uh, the psalmist uh, gives us a vision, I think, in Psalm 84. He says, What joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord, who have set their minds on a pilgrimage. When they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. They will continue to grow stronger with each of them until each of them will appear before God and Jerusalem. That, that the psalmist is saying that there is joy for those of us that's available, if, that, that comes to us from the Lord. And, and when we walk and live in that joy, that when we walk through the valley of weeping, the, the world that we live in, when we walk through a world of heartache and heartbreak and pain and suffering and troubles and woes, that we can be a refreshing spring, that, that we can be people who bring life, that, that we can be solid people in the midst of a tumultuous world. That's, that's the vision. How do we live into that? How do we, how do we be those people? And, and fundamentally, it begins with, with this um, with this, it begins with the fact that, that God loves you, that, that God loves me, that where you are, who you are right now today, 
that God loves you more than you can imagine, that he has always loved you, that he will always love you, that he, he looks at you and, and like a proud parent pulls out their pictures, um, their child's picture, we used to do it um, from our wallet, but now we do it from our, from our um, iPhones, right? And we show our, this is my kid and we're so proud of them and we're proud of their accomplishments. God looks at you that, that, that way, that God loves you and, and that God made you to be you. He, he made you to be the person that you are. He created you in his image and in his likeness. That he crowned us, humanity, with glory and honor. And that he made us the way we are to do things that he, Paul says, to do things that he prepared in advance for us to do. That he made us the way we are to do things that are good for the world that we live in and that are good for other people. That God made you for life to eat from the, the tree of right, life, to drink from the river of life. Um, I, I used to, uh, eat, I eat cereal almost every day for breakfast, and, and one of my favorite cereals, I've kind of drifted away now, but one of my favorite f cereals used to be Cinnamon Life. And uh, every once in a while, we would accidentally buy a box of life instead of the box of Cinnamon Life. Cinnamon life. And I, I don't know if you've ever tried them, but like Cinnamon Life is just this, like dull, dry, tasteless um, cereal that, that like I wouldn't eat um, unless I was starving. And if I was starving, I would eat it, but right? it, it, it's, it will fill you up, but it doesn't do it in a very pleasant way. Whereas cinnamon life is like the opposite. Like cinnamon gives you the new, like fills you up, right? Strengthens you, but it, but it does it with flavor. It, it does it with zest. It's like you eat it and you, and, and you want more of it. That, that I think it's a, a great picture of the difference between can, life the way that, that we often live it and, and just like getting by and, and making it through and trying to get through another day. And, and life as God intended it for us to experience it, life to the full, that, that God um, purposes us for us to have, um, to have cinnamon life. And, and that Jesus' mission was to give that life back to us, to take us from life to, to cinnamon life, to restore us from just surviving and trying to get by another day, to, to living in, in fullness and abundance of life. But experiencing life the way that we were meant to experience it, to live life the way that we were meant to live it, it's counterintuitive. We don't get life. We don't get cinnamon life by taking care of ourselves, we, by, by looking out for number one, by, by making ourselves the center of the universe. I mean, think about it. Do you know a narcissist that when you look at them, you say, hey, that's, that's, I want to be like that person. I, I want to live that kind of life. I don't like myself when, that, when I'm that way. I, I don't want to be that kind of person because it leaves us in a place of anger and resentment and bitterness because people never live up to the expectations. Our plans for our lives never go the way that we want them to or the way that we think that we should. We're always left disappointed. And, and we don't get there either by trying to make other people happy. Because first of all, I, it, it never works when, when we set out to, if I can just make them happy, then, then I'll be happy. It, it, it never works. We can never make somebody else happy. And usually the motive for that is we, if, we're, if we're people pleasers, we're trying to make other people happy for our own happiness. What we're really trying to do is, is to make ourselves happy and to, to by proving our value, our worth, and to, and to then derive that from them. And, and that's always a failed effort too. We, we don't get cinnamon life, we don't get life by trying to fulfill ourselves or by trying to make other people happy. Jesus says we get life by living our life for him. We get life by living our life for him. If anyone seeks to save their life, they will lose it. But by losing their life for my sake, then we find it. We think, I think sometimes, that because God has loved us, because God gave his son for us, because God sacrificed for us, then, then we have to repay our debt to God by, um, by loving and, and serving other people because he did it for us. And how can we not live lives of gratitude and thanksgiving by, by doing it for others? 
But, but that's actually not God's intent, not God's design. That he loved us, now we have to love others to pay back our debt. The debt was paid by Jesus. That God has loved us, and he's opened up the door, the pathway for life by showing us what look, love looks like and by showing us how to love so that we experience the life that we were made for because the life that we were made for is experienced as we love other people. God loves the world and he has chosen us to share it. To share it. Not just the message, not just the words of his love, but to actually share the love itself. The journey did it yesterday when we had our monthly food pantry distribution and so many of you have provided food that, that we give out to our community, to, our community to, to bless them and to provide for their needs in the name of Jesus. And, and so many of you come and help us pack boxes and, and, and pass those boxes out uh, to, our, to our neighbors in the community. And, and, and so we're, we're acting in love as, as we do those things. The, the team journey is doing it this morning um, as they walk uh, for kids in the world. And I can't wait for you to hear um, from some of this morning as they talk about their why, why they're doing what they're doing, and, and an opportunity for you to support them in that. And we're going to have the opportunity to do it again on November 13th when we do our um, annual um, Operation Christmas Child shoebox packing, when we're um, providing gifts that will go out to the world to, to share the story of Christmas and, and the celebration of God's gift and um, through those gifts that, that we're giving to, to, to others, that, that we are invited and find and experience life as we love other people the way that God loved us, not because God's loved us, because that is our experience and our avenue to the life that God made us for and the life that we most deeply long for. And when then, when, we, when we're walking in that love, knowing that we're loved and loving others, when we, when we walk through the valley of weeping, when we walk through this broken world, we will make it. We will be refreshing springs, a life-giving source of water. So from here, you're going you're gonna to see a water video just reminding us of, of the whole significance and the importance of water and, and why we do Team World Vision. You're going to hear from Don Lee uh, in just a minute. You're going to hear from some of our, our runners. And um, I want to thank you uh, for joining us again today and just enjoy what you're going to hear. While most girls dream about the future, and what they'll be when they grow up, all Everlene dreamed about was having clean water so she could go to school. She would walk, sometimes five hours a day, for drinking water that looked like this. Everlene and her family weren't the only ones. In her country of Zambia, over four million people have no choice, and it affects every part of their lives. Without water, it's hard to grow food. Parents have little time or energy to provide for their families. Children get sick and can't go to school. If there was anything I hated most, it was missing school. So just imagine what it's like to be in a village the day World Vision brings clean water. Their lives will never be the same. Everlene's life will never be the same. The taste was totally different from the dirty water. The water from the borehole was glittering in your mouth. You could feel the smoothness. Since World Vision built this well in Everlene's village, people no longer get sick from the water. She and her friends no longer spend hours each day getting dirty water. They are healthy and able to go to school. <laughs> Now we are able to go to school with a free mind because of what they have done for us. I am strong. Now, she dreams of college and becoming an accountant. Good morning, Mr. Mbuzi. And she prays that other girls like her might one day dream too. My desire is that communities going through what we went through, the suffering that we saw, should also have a day that this burden will be taken away. 
And God bless them for what they are doing because it has actually changed our lives. We are so grateful. Clean water inspires big dreams for little girls like Everly. Dreams of hope and a bright future. Hey everyone at The Journey, Don Lee here wanting to thank you for your years of partnership throughout the years. The Journey has been there through thick and thin, literally changing the world. Now, many years ago, my dream job was to become a worship pastor of a big church. Because you think about it, you have access to amazing musicians, you have access to resources, and you're just making beautiful music together. And I got that opportunity, but it came through a strange internship. Now, at this internship, I'll never forget my first day because I walked into this room, uh, my boss's office, and he had, he had me sit on his couch. And I did nothing. I said, boss, is there anything you want me to do? He's like, no, nah, um, I'll get to you in a minute. I did nothing. The second day of work, I reported, I sat on his couch and did nothing. The third day of work, I sat on his couch and did nothing. Yeah, I did nothing. This went on for about two months. I was so frustrated because I, I, I did nothing that after one Sunday, I remember walking in the hallway of the church and I bumped into this brother that I barely knew, just vented to him, thinking that he would just affirm my feelings that I should just quit. But instead, he shared words that changed my life. He said, Don, what if you got off the couch? And what if you led the worship ministry? And I was like, oh, wait, but I can't get on that stage. I'm not allowed to do that. He's like, no, no, no. I'm not saying leading from the stage. I'm saying leading the ministry. The two different things. Well, that really struck a chord with me so much so that the day after, I did not sit on the couch. Matter of fact, I went to the hallway of the church, found a desk that nobody was using, and pushed it down the hallway into the green room placed it in the corner and declared that this corner of the room was my office from here on out. And sure enough, I slowly led this worship ministry that I got offered the full-time worship pastor job. And I remember my boss saying on that day, it's so funny, your journey, because we were gonna fire you because all you did, Don, for two months was sit on the couch. I share that story, friends, because the journey has been a church that has not sat on a couch. You have gotten off that couch and you've changed the world locally and globally. Since 2016, friends, you've provided clean water to 4,600 children, raising over $230,000. Just br breathe that in for a second because that's amazing. And on top, that's not even counting the, spon the kids that have been sponsored. And when we talk about clean water, we're, we are making some amazing strides right now because countries like Rwanda have 100% coverage now. We're crossing countries off the list. They have access to clean water. Friends, it's working. The work that we're doing, it's working. And you've been at the center at it. But here's the thing. Getting off the couch, that's not the destination. Getting clean water to these kids, that's only a small fragment of what we're doing because it's not about the clean water. It's about the people receiving the clean water. I wanted to show you, uh, share a story about uh, one that's just been striking me these days, and it's the story of Elizabeth. This is Elizabeth. She's 10 years old, and she's from Mozambique. Her father passed away, and her new stepdad didn't want anything to do with her. Matter of fact, they kicked her out. Um, she was not doing well. Well, World Vision was working in this area, intervened and talked to the stepdad, talked to the mom and convinced them the best thing, not just for Elizabeth, but for this family is to bring them, bring Elizabeth back home. Well, sure enough, she's back home now and she's doing well. And not only is she doing well, but the whole family is stronger than ever. That is the work that you and I are involved with. That is the work that World Vision is involved with. That, my friends, is what we call reconciliation. That's the work of reconciliation between God and between each other. 
Thank you so much, friends, for seeing beyond the difficult circumstances that the pandemic's brought and that everything else has brought. I don't know what journey you've been on, but you've continued to run. You've continued to walk. You've continued to cheer. You've continued to pray. And you've continued to give. Thank you for all that because that has all made a difference, not just in the destination, but in the journey. Thank you. And I can't wait to see you guys soon. Good morning, Journey family and friends. This is Ron Thomas coming live to you from the Long Beach Marathon course. Not exactly true. This is not live, this is pre-recorded, but I am on the Long Beach Marathon course. Because as you can see behind me, there's the pyramid at Cal State Long Beach. Yes, I am here. Right now, this is about the, oh, 19 and a half, 20 mile mark. Um, why am I doing this? Well. Kids need clean water. And there's so many kids around the world that do not have clean water. And all it takes is $50 to provide that child with clean water for life. Hey guys, it's Jesse Vanderbond. And once again, I will be lining up on the start line for the Long Beach Half Marathon. Um, one of my favorite things about being a part of Team World Vision is getting to spend every Saturday with some amazing people at Group Run. The best part of being on the team is knowing that you're doing something that has lasting impact for kids' lives and is in accordance with God's wishes. Um, my least favorite part is probably the actual running, um, but it's not really about the running, it's about why we're running. And we are running to give kids access to life-saving clean water. Um, the Having access to clean water um, can, has the potential to change the trajectory of a child's life. Um, so please join us and support and cheering us on on, on Sunday morning. Uh, $50 uh, can provide clean water for one child for their entire life. Um, so thanks, you guys. Thanks for all the support. And I'm really looking forward to that finish line. You can also sponsor a child through World Vision, too. I sponsor three. I have uh, Alejandra, Euphinia, and most recently is Nesiolani. And that is why I get up this early in the morning, nearly every day, to practice, train, so I can do all this. So if you would like to uh, donate to, to sponsor a child, to donate water, whatever, um, you can go to teamjourney.org and you can uh, donate to any one of our runners. If you want to donate specifically to me, I'm just ron.teamjourney.org. And I'd love your support, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you after the race. All right, talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. Hi, I'm Lynn, and I really love working with all the people um, on our team. Um, so it makes me get up and walk on Saturday mornings, but I also love the whole cause of getting clean water to children or anybody. I think everyone should have clean water. Um, the things I don't like, I, I'm not a big religious person, so that part I don't like. And another thing that I really like, or I've noticed, is um, together we, um, oh, alone, you go faster, but together we go farther, and I really see how true that is. So thank you, it's been great. I actually got a donation from somebody at the Wiener Schnitzel drive through because they saw my Team World Vision hat. My why is God told me that I could do this. He didn't tell me I had to be fast. He didn't tell me I had to be special or get the best time. But that if I could run or walk these miles, then some child wouldn't have to.
we got to go to Zambia and meet a few of our sponsored kids in 2019, and that was uh, such an amazing experience. And uh, meeting the kids and and some of their families and seeing their smiles and um, just you know connecting them with them in a real way that was so cool. But I think the the thing that's been most um, surprising to me about um, sponsoring kids and being a part of that program is that one of our uh, sponsor kids, uh, Adam um, from Niger, not one of the kids we met, um, but he died um, a couple years ago of typhoid fever, uh, a disease that's completely preventable and um, but is uh, often spread because of waterborne diseases. And um, when Adam died, I, the, the, um, the loss that I felt and that Deb and I felt um, just spoke to me about how important these connections are to us and how um, we are not just doing something for these kids, that they're doing something for us and, and they're, um, they're part of our lives and they're part of our hearts and, and Adam's uh, passing really brought that home for me and uh, makes me want to do everything I can to help these kids succeed and live and have life. I, I started running about 30 years ago and never dreamed that I would be able to run and get water for children in Africa. So uh, this is something that uh, when I got older, God has blessed me by being able to do this. And, uh, and he's called us to do it and, and I enjoy running for a long time, but uh, this year has not been too enjoyable with the heat and my age is kind of catching up with me, but if, as long as I can do it, I'll keep running to raise water for children. So I appreciate anybody that would be praying for me this weekend that I could continue to do this uh, and, and survive this race without too much trouble. <laughs> so I, thank you very much for all your support. The best part about being a part of Team World Vision is uh, I think seeing people do things that they never thought that they would do. Uh, running a half marathon or a marathon, asking friends to, uh, to donate to support them. Um, and doing it because they see that uh, what they're doing is making a difference and, and changing lives. And uh, so seeing that progression of people just like wide-eyed, really me do this and yet then doing it and uh, that sense of accomplishment, I love that. I hate running. I've always hated running. Uh, but I'm not um, the most important part of this. God is and you are. $50 can change a child's life forever. Be a part of it. Thank you for joining us today. Remember to support our runners. Uh, running marathons and half marathons does not bring clean water to kids to kids. Uh, contributions, donations do. Uh, without that, our runners are out there taking a very long walk this morning. Uh, also remember to support the journey. Um, ultimately, the church is God's answer to the globe's biggest problems, that it is the church that he has called out, that he has empowered and fused with the life of his spirit to be his hands and feet to the world. And uh, by his design, uh, that's accomplished through the faithful stewardship, the time, talents, and treasures of, uh, of his sons and daughters. Uh, so uh, continue to support the mission of the journey in that way. And uh, we will see you back here next Sunday. We will be live in the sanctuary and we'll be back online uh, starting a new series next week called Uncommon Core. Jesus, teach us. So uh, join us next week for the beginning of that next series and pray with me as we close. Lord, I pray for uh, all of our runners who are out there today as they're finishing up, uh, God give them uh, strength uh, to get to the finish line and uh, we pray for the people that will benefit um, from the work that they've done and for the, from the support that they've received uh, this morning uh, for the kids who will get clean water and have an opportunity to go to school and uh, who will receive health care and uh, be given um, the opportunity not just to, to survive another day to the opportunity for for cinnamon life and uh, so bless them and prepare them for what uh, they're going to receive from this. And I pray for your spirit to guide us in this week and all the opportunities that we have in our, in our neighborhoods and in our families and our communities to love people in the name of Jesus and to experience your life as your spirit lives up through us to bring life to others, um, that we might know the fullness of life that you've created us for and uh, the fullness of your love that you have for us. 
Um, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go with God's grace, walk and live in love and the power of His Spirit. Go in peace, but not to pieces. Amen.